I'm Valerie Bertinelli. You may know me from Valerie's Home Cooking or Kids Baking Championship. And I'm glad you're joining me today because we're about to elevate your picnic with a pressed Italian sandwich with its own homemade olive relish. This is the perfect summertime meal. And I want you to make this in plenty of time. You can make this the night before your picnic, the night before you go to an outdoor concert where you wanna bring some food along and a nice bottle of wine. This is the perfect sandwich, perfect for do ahead, make ahead. So let's get started with the relish first, okay? What I'd like you to do is make sure you have plenty of different types of olives because it really makes the relish that much more flavorful because each olive kind of has its own little personality, like this one right here, the Castel Beltrano. It's kind of nice and buttery. And then we have manzanilla in here. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit firmer. And then we have some Kalamata. We have some good old Spanish olives in here with some pimentos in there for color. So all of these olives are gonna get chopped up right now. We're gonna make the relish. So if you want to get your own mixture of olives, you can get all of these type of olives at your local grocery store at the Olive Bar. If not, I encourage you to just try a bunch of different olives that you see in the aisle and just see what you like. But I do wanna tell you, please make sure that they're pitted <laughs> because we don't wanna have any pits in our olive relish. So I'm just giving these guys a big rough chop and the rougher the chop, the better. Now, the reason I'm making olive relish for this sandwich is because we're making a mashup of two of my favorite sandwiches. My mom's Italian sub, which was beyond. I don't even want to know or remember how many I ate when I was pregnant. She would make them for me. It was I, That's all I craved. And my other favorite sandwich is from a famous market in New Orleans, and it's called Buffaletta. And they have an amazing olive relish. Get all of these olives into the bowl. So you see how all of the olives are just different sizes and shapes? That's okay, you want a rough chop. Next thing that's gonna go in is a garlic clove. But I don't wanna chop this guy. I really want the garlic to really infuse into the relish. So we're gonna use a zester. And I first learned this trick from Rachel Ray. She does this with all of her garlic and it really makes the garlic really tender. As you can see, it's like a garlic paste. So that goes right in. Then for some freshness and crunch, a celery stalk. Let's just slice it right down the middle and then give it a nice chop. And I purposely kept the leaves on because they have a little bit of bitterness to them. It's gonna go perfect in this relish. This celery will add a nice crunch and freshness to the olives. A Little bit more greenery in here. Let's grab some flat leaf parsley. Okay. So I don't mind if you get a lot of the stems in there too. Add some more crunch. Here we go. I think the reason I love these two sandwiches that are mashed up into one so much is because you have the saltiness, you have the crunchy, you have the creaminess of the cheese and the different flavors of each one of these beautiful meats. On top of that, it's super easy and you can make it a day ahead. And the reason you can make it so far ahead is because you don't have tomato to make your bread soggy. You don't have to have lettuce on there. You just have this beautiful, tasty olive salad, but it needs some Italian seasoning. So there we go. That's all together. One last thing, some olive oil. Just a little bit, like a tablespoon just enough to coat it all. And then give that a quick mix. Now there's just enough olive oil in here to kind of coat the bread, but not make it soggy. And you're using a ciabatta because it's really beautiful and airy and soft on the inside, but the outer crust is just firm enough so that it won't get too soggy. You know what would really be great with this olive relish? Get some hot pasta. Throw it in here, it'd make a really great pasta too, for some fresh tomatoes. Beautiful. Now there's a lot of olives in here, which are salty, so you don't need any salt. Okay, let's put this to this side. And now we're gonna slice this beautiful big piece of ciabatta. A lovely man invented it just right outside of Venice, which by the way, I think he invented it sometime in the 80s, so it's a newer Italian bread. 
he wasn't liking that so many people in Italy were eating so much French bread. So he came up with this bread. Ah, almost cut it perfectly. It'll be fine. Okay, so you're gonna get your cheese on first. We have this beautiful, mild, buttery provolone. Now, I like the mild provolone because there's a lot of flavor in the olive salad. And you'll notice that I still have some left over because that's gonna go on top of the meat too. Next up, mortadella. I love mortadella, it's one of my favorites. Sometimes you'll see mortadella in the market. It's got, always got these big, beautiful pockets of fat. And this is made of pork. It's like an Italian bologna. Sometimes it'll have some pistachio in it. Sometimes it'll have little peppercorns in it. Let's get some more up here. Next up, we have some beautiful, good old fashioned ham. And you really wanna layer it gently. My mom, she would make all of our lunches, my brothers and mine. She made a lot of sandwiches and it's usually the night before. There's your ham, some nice, thinly sliced turkey. This is just good old oven roasted. If you'll notice, each one of these cold cuts have their own little special flavor to them. Turkey, it's mild, it grabs any flavor. I mean, there's nothing like a good turkey sandwich, right? There we go. Turkey is on. Last but not least, Genoa salami from Genoa in Italy. So this isn't really smoked like some salamis can be. It's just aged. It also has a tiny bit of wine in it. So of course I love it. <laughs> that adds to a little bit of tanginess to it. I happen to like when the bread gets all that olive oil into the, all the nooks and crannies in there. So I'm gonna put the rest of the cheese on top and then put the relish on top of the cheese. There we go. And then the relish goes on. Just lay it all on. Look at that, yum. I wanna get it as close to the edges as possible without it falling off, because you can see there's a little mountain in the middle of cheese and delicious meats. Okie doke, that looks good. This goes on top. Now we wanna wrap it up and get it weighted down so it presses down in the fridge. And it's gonna have to sit in the fridge for at least four hours, but like I told you, you can do this overnight. So I wanna make sure that I have enough parchment paper to cover it over. Okay, that's gonna be enough. Now, here's the tricky part. We need to get the sandwich from there onto here upside down. How do we propose we do that? We just do it, right? We just do it. We just do it. Flippity doo dah. Yes, there it goes, perfect. Okay. Now, you get all this parchment paper wrapped up. And the reason I flipped it upside down is because I want all of that olive oil to go right into the bread. And this ciabatta, it can hold it. It's not gonna get too soggy. So now this is gonna go on top of a sheet pan. Ooh, that looks good. Tuck it under, so you make sure all the parchment is tucked under. Get another sheet pan to go on top of it. All right, pressing it down. We need some weight, so I'm gonna grab my trusty cast iron because I want all that olive oil to seep into the bread and make it nice and unctuous and delicious. So it's gonna sit in here, in the paper, weighted down in the fridge for about four hours. See you in four hours. Woo, heavy. It's been about four hours. Time to see what this gorgeous sandwich looks like. Nice and flattened. Let's cut it open. All right. This sandwich does not feed one, or it could. I'm gonna cut it in to six pieces. We got our knife. I like to use a serrated knife. You can use what you like as long as it's nice and sharp. I like to cut it right down the middle first. And the nice thing about it sitting in the fridge and really coming together, it's so much easier to slice. It kind of really sticks together. So it could feed six people or three really hungry people or two really, really hungry people. All right, let's plate this up because I want to eat the whole thing. Ooh. 
Look at that. You guys, do you see this? You see the way the oil has seeped up into the nooks and crannies? All the olives are in there and the beautiful meats have all kind of like melded together. It's gorgeous. As you can see, it didn't make the bread soggy. It just gave that bread so much more flavor. You wanna take a bite? <laughs> I do. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. This is just bringing me home. It's like a little bit of my mama, a little bit of New Orleans, all in one sandwich. It's so delicious. It's salty, it's creamy from the provolone cheese. It's got the nice little give to it in the bread. It's really one of those perfect sandwiches that will go anywhere. You can make it way ahead. It'll stay in your picnic basket. And when you bring it out, it's ready to be eaten. Boy, that was fun. Thanks, you guys, for coming by. I love cooking with you. I hope you love this sandwich as much as I do. And come back and see me again.